And this is LBC 97.3. Unemployment down by 14,000 between October and December to some two and a half million. Best estimates generally put the number of vacancies at any one time around half a million. And we also learned today of eight jobs at a branch of Costa Coffee in Nottingham attracting more than 1,700 applications. It, there appears to be something of a, of a disconnect between these two states of affairs. If anyone can join the dots, it's Ian Duncan Smith, the Work and Pension Secretary, who joins me on the line now. It's, it's a mark of politics curious nature that unemployment of two and a half million is a cause this morning for you for mild celebration. Well, I'm not celebrating. Um, what I'm simply saying is that this is uh, better news, and uh, in difficult times, uh, if you were standing in France, Italy, Spain, or Greece, or any of those other countries in Europe, uh, seeing their unemployment levels rising and youth unemployment at staggering levels, uh, you'd actually say this was, uh, you know, considerably more positive than their position, which is what it is. You know, this is difficult times, but our unemployment figures are in reasonable shape, and the most important thing is there are more people in work now than ever before. So, and the other figure which is really important is the long-term unemployment for the second figure running is now falling, which has been the stubbornly high figure previously. That's really beginning to have an effect. And economic inactivity, which is the other one, longer term, which people who have never been in the workforce uh, are now uh, at the lowest levels they've been arguably since the records began. So these are positive longer-term figures, but obviously, you know, we want the economy to be growing more so that people... Uh, more and more people can be sucked back into work and people can have better incomes. The, the evidence, it's, it's anecdotal, but it's probably more reliable than, than the average politician's evidence that we receive here is that a large number of these jobs will be part-time and below what, of course, is, is termed the living wage. Is there any way of counting that? Yeah, well, actually, if you look at the figures, they're not politicians' figures, by the way. These are independently verified figures by the ONS. And what they show is that, for example, in these set of figures, all the jobs that have been taken are full-time work. And, you know, when we look at this part-time work, it's part of the kind of, oh, you know, everyone's in part-time work. First of all, there's nothing wrong with part-time work for many, many people. The vast majority who take it do it because they have caring responsibilities and they can't do full Well, I... D- I, d- I d- but the second you, point no, I want to make no, is... That, that's a, simply well, not true, No, is no, it? there's a... Fi- it is true. It's the only job you can find is part-time. No, You're no, going to take it. hold on a second. Well, let's, why don't we live on the figures, OK? Not my well, anecdotes are. are yours. The figures are published today show that 83% of those who seek full-time work are in full-time work. Uh, it's only 17%, I say that's even that is too high for me, but 17% of those who are looking for full-time work can't find full-time work or taking part-time work. So the vast, vast majority, not my figures, No, the no, no, no Mr. Mr. Duncan Smith, so these there, are there, there could be two points. and a half million people looking for full-time work. You're confining yourself to people who've found it. No, no, I'm talking about those who are looking for work, those well, who the, have found there, work. Yes, those who found it. Work. There could be two and a half million people looking yes, for full-time work. Yes, but my point work. is, listen... <laughs> These are different economic times. Very closely. These are there are two anecdotes. and a half million people. These are not anecdotes. <laughs> These are reality. The yes. reality is that those who seek full-time work are finding full-time work. And two and a half million people aren't. Yeah, but those are the people seeking work. That's what I'm saying. You're not, you know, those who find work are finding the full-time work that they're after. Others are no, looking for work. The people who are finding jobs are finding full-time work. There's still millions of people not finding yeah, jobs. These figures run for both sides of the equation. Those who are seeking work that's part-time... Yes, are and those that haven't got any work but would work, like those, some. Yes, but what, you've got an insight into the people seeking work that you know the predominant numbers of them are all no, seeking No, I leave that. Work. I leave that to you because no, well, you I think don't. that shelf-stacking... You think they think shelf-stacking is beneath them. That, that's I, an insight, isn't it, into no, their mind? No, it isn't. That's a oh. ridiculous point to make, if you don't mind me saying so, because I didn't say that. What I said was... I've got the transcript who in front on, of Yes, me. OK. People who are doing work experience, which is us allowing people to continue to earn their job seekers allowance, but also to take experience in companies that allow them to do that, uh, they will learn all sorts of different skills. But the reality, I said, is that, look, Going into a business and involving yourself in a supermarket stacking shelves is as vital as any other job that you might have to do. And oh. particularly as all of us go to shop at supermarkets, the point I was making, which is more important in life, if your shelves are not got food on them, doesn't the shelf stacker have some particularly strong position in society? Yes, I but you, you, were, you, were talking about a, you were talking about a woman who had no problem with stacking shelves. She merely wanted to be paid for it. And when you use that she word... was paid for it. Well, what do you oh, think well, the taxpayer is... was paying her, for God's I'm sake? So job seekers' allowance? I'm so glad you 
is you've what said we that. are paying her to do. I am so glad do. you've said that. So what would you rather that the ta- well, taxpayer if you let me, I'll allows tell you. her to sit on unemployment, not getting work experience? If you it was let me, young I'll, people I'll tell you. who asked us for work experience, yes. and over half of those, 50%, are going into work as a result of that work experience. Let me read you Very the positive. official Department of Work and Pensions response to a petition to abolish workfare, and I quote from your own department, we do not have work for your benefit or workfare schemes in this country. A further response to a freedom of information request, your own department stated... We don't have a workfare programme. Benefit is not paid to the claimant as remuneration for the activity. So explain to me how she can earn her job seeker's allowance in a country where benefit is not paid as remuneration. Because the work experience programme is one that you volunteer to do. And once you volunteer to do, it's made clear to you that... The Court of Appeal has just found that you ask me a question. Why don't you let me answer it? I am letting you answer it. You're not answering the question I asked. Let me finish, okay? Okay. If you just want to make a mess of this, that's fine. But let's just get the facts out of the It's your prerogative, Mr. We do not have a workfare program. What I found when I arrived is that young people were not allowed to go and do work experience and be paid job seekers allowance for more than two weeks. Because we were asked by large numbers of them who said we can't get employment because when we sit down with an employer, the first thing they ask us is, what work experience have you got? And their answer is, we don't have work experience, but we can't get it unless somebody allows us to do it. And we can't do it, otherwise we lose our benefit. What we changed was the rules around that so that young people could go and do work experience for up to two months, still receive their benefit. They could put that on their CVs, and in many cases, the businesses, once they've seen them for two months, say to them, actually, we think we're going to create a job around you because we think you're worthwhile. That is a positive. How does they're it, not how being does it forced accommodate, to do it. Well, they're they are. Doing the it, the but, Court no, of Appeal has just found that they are. No, but we, but we don't, don't understand need to focus what the Court of Appeal found. I, I'm afraid that you I do. don't, with respect. Well, why don't you explain? The, oh, well, thank you. What the Court of Appeal found was this is not against their human rights to do it, which was the main. I haven't case mentioned that they human brought. right. That's what they did. They brought that case on the basis. I haven't that mentioned this was human against rights. Against their human rights. The second point was the court found that the regulations around this should have been more specific to each individual scheme. We had deliberately set them general around all work schemes, and they've asked us to set them more specifically. We have done that. Let us My be. Point let is, us be this specific. This is a voluntary program. Young people want it. The vast, vast majority enjoy it and they get something out of it and they get to work for it. I need to clarify this point. You use the word earn to describe the payment of job seekers allowance to somebody working for a highly profitable company like Poundland. That is your your phrase. You used it on on this program and you used it on the Andrew... You you don't like being interrupted yourself, Mr Duncan Smith. Okay, far away. And then we learn from your own department that benefit is not paid to the claimant as remuneration for the activity. Those two positions are completely irreconcilable. No, they're not. Listen, they volunteer to do this. We have allowed them to continue to receive Job Seekers Alliance at the time they're doing their work experience. What she was saying is, we're not paid, we don't receive any money. My answer is, you do. The taxpayer is paying you uh, Job Seekers Alliance. We have allowed you to do work experience and not lose your Job Seekers Alliance. So it's remuneration. So in the past, past, she would have lost her Job Seekers Allowance had she gone to do more than two weeks. So the benefit is payment for the work. So I don't quite understand what you're getting concerned about. If you you concentrated on what I'm saying instead of telling me to listen all the time, you would. She is getting paid for doing the work at Poundland with her Job Seekers Allowance. It is a pay pay packet. It's work experience. She is benefiting from the work experience that she'll then go on and be more likely to be employed in the future. I think that's a positive. I think it's ludicrous to assume that this is some kind of a negative. They were not able well, I, to get work experience before we well, changed you the know, rules. You know that this woman had actually secured voluntary work experience, and you also know that to describe her as somehow sneering or looking but down at shelf stacking is absurd. she to go on the work experience programme. Because she'd been lied to about what it would involve, as the Court of Appeal found last week. They did not find that she was lied to well, about I'm sorry, you just said they needed to clarify exactly what the the instructions and regulations were. The regulations were around the withdrawal of benefit if she failed to comply with what she'd agreed to do. Which only works if the benefit is a reward for doing a work experience. I do wish, with respect, you would read what the judgment was. I've read every word of the judgment, Mr Duncan Smith. you need to understand it with respect. Well, with respect to you, I do, and and insulting me doesn't advance the argument in any way. This debate is going nowhere because you had made your mind up before you had this interview. Au contraire, this debate is incredible. 
incredibly illuminating. You, this very debate positive. is incredibly well, illuminating. Are you saying to me that these kids shouldn't be doing work experience and that if they then... I'm saying that if they're working, they should get paid. It's quite straightforward. Well, then, you are. Why they shouldn't are, they be? They are on job seekers' allowance. The taxpayer is paying them. They're getting work experience. And over so what is the minimum wage legislation for? The jobs. That's what they're doing. What's they're minimum wage legislation for? This is work experience. They are doing up to two months work experience. I don't quite understand why you think that they shouldn't be doing that, but they should be paid a full wage because the companies aren't committing to taking to them on. Many of them then do. This is a net Well, hang positive. on. Remind us of the companies that have pulled out of the scheme. There are more companies joining the scheme than have even pulled out. I don't out. think that's an answer to my question. Well, the it? vast, but the huge numbers of companies joined the scheme and are very happy with the scheme, uh, and they are not pulling out. This is a t reality that they think this scheme is very good. It gives them a chance to look at young kids coming in. It gives a chance for those young kids to get some experience about the world of work, which they wouldn't otherwise do, and it makes it very, very important for them because then they're able to take those jobs, often in the companies themselves, and sometimes when when they come out, it's in their CV. They then get a job later on because they've got work experience. This is a net positive. This is using taxpayers' money to do the right thing, to get kids into work. That is a number one priority. I, I don't... I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you say it. It doesn't sound any more plausible or convincing. That The bottom line is that you're using benefits to pay an incredibly cheap workforce to subsidise incredibly profitable companies and passing it off as some sort of assault upon a fictional, feckless generation. Well, I don't agree with you. I'm well, of course you agree. don't. Well, you know, you obviously... 1,700 people in Nottingham applying... 1,700 people applying for eight jobs. Look, there are more people in work today than at any time in records. There are more people. There are, there are more people alive today than at any point since records there are more began. People what a strange observation. Okay, look, this is turning into 1700 a bit of a political star tribe on your part, I think. Well, you, you you're obviously made entitled. your mind up about this is fine. I've come on here to talk quite rightly about the fact that even in difficult times, the British labour market is doing better than we would have expected, that long term unemployment is falling, that the reality is that employment is improving and that unemployment is falling as well. And I believe that the programmes that we've set around this, and we're not going to agree about this, but I absolutely believe that work experience is critical to that, to help young people get experience of the world of work and get into work. We simply won't agree about that, but that is my oh, position. Well, that I'm is why I'm doing it. Terribly okay? sorry. I agree with you entirely. People need an awful lot of help to get into work, as in proved by the fact that 1,700 people are applying for eight jobs in a coffee shop in Nottingham today. What would you say to the 1,692 who failed? Well, the reality is that even in that area, there are 15,000 vacancies, and the reality is the claimant count in that area is still falling. So Which, I is say that, to all that's really those, what you'd say to them? The on, reality let finish, is... Let me finish. Like, so what I say is categorically this. You have to keep looking for jobs. There are jobs there. It's not easy. I'm not saying there's a magic wand to wave, but the reality that people are looking for those jobs is a positive point to make for young people's determination to find work. But our job is to make sure that we make the circumstances right around those companies so that they can actually create more work, Sorry, you've lost which me. is what they are doing. You've lost me. Come back to the figures. Overall, the, in that I did. area, the 1692 there are more jobs people. Being well, and there are 15,000 vacancies in the same area. Yes, so, so it's a positive. I don't quite know what your point is here. Well, I'm not surprised. You're not listening to a word I'm saying. To the 1,692 people who fail to get one of these jobs in a coffee shop, you say that's a positive. I didn't say that at all. Because if you want to keep on did. trying to indicate what I say, when I said quite clearly, look... All of them will be deeply disappointed, but the reality is there are jobs and there is work there, and people have to keep on looking for it. This is not easy times. You know, if you were sitting in France or Italy or yes, Spain, we're not, you would Duncan find Smith, these we? positions much more positive. So, I don't okay, so no, that, that's that I understand you know, now. So you say you to them, be grateful you don't, businesses? be grateful you don't live in France. No, I'm not saying that. I oh. said that the positive figures today are a good indication that the private sector is creating jobs. There are more people in work. There are more vacancies. The claimant count is falling. These are positives. I'm not saying they're brilliant, but they're positives. You know, they are showing that the economy is moving in the right direction, and the employment levels, as I said, long-term unemployment is showing that it is falling. Unemployment is falling. The claimant count is falling and employment is rising, and the vacancy level has been rising. There are over half a million vacancies on a daily basis in the UK. For so two and a half million job seekers? 
These are the facts. Yes, okay. half a million vacancies for two and a half million yeah. job seekers. But I didn't at any stage say these are magic wand, this is easy. I said that this is a positive position because these, to- these figures show that this is an improving situation. More people are entering the workforce, more people are being employed, and long-term unemployed people are being found work. And the programmes that we're putting around them, including work experience, which you don't seem to think much of... No, I, I just think people should be paid. a positive effect. OK? They are being paid. The taxpayer is paying for them. Yes, that's, they a, that's are the astonishing the element of this whole exchange, no, isn't it? That, that about you think it. that a benefit is, is a payment for, for work no, done. No, what I think is work experience gives people a chance to see the world of work. It gives a chance for the company to see them. I think the taxpayer is making an investment in that because for two months that gives them now a much better chance of getting into work. Uh, I don't agree with you at all. I think the work experience programme is a huge success. Over half of those who enter it... Apart from the little wobble in the Court of Appeal last week. ...benefits. That is the reality. It is a strong and good programme, and I am very proud of it. What happens, finally, if your uh, challenge to the Court of Appeal findings last week failed? Uh, We're already said that we've changed the regulations going forward, so those regulations... Okay, so so the thing you're proud of has now been changed? No. The programmes themselves are exactly the same. We're just but the regulations have changed. Well, the regulations, as they asked for... The programme is exactly the same, the but the regulations have changed. The around the programme, they said, should be tightened up, and we've tightened them up. Ian Duncan-Smith, many thanks for your time.